What's up, Mr. Fucking Desert Dime? <laughs> what is going on, guys? And welcome back to another fantastic video, and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very special video. Uh, this is not my first time filming it. We've filmed this once before, which we'll get into in a little bit. But today, as you could tell by the thumbnail and the title, we're doing a walk around on Mr. Cole Jensen's, AKA Tuscan Rados, long travel cat eye Silverado. So like I said, we already filmed this once before, but that was on uh, our buddy Hayden's camera because I wanted to test out the camera and see if it's something I want to upgrade to. But unfortunately, some of the settings weren't right, so the footage didn't come out too well. And I, you know I only want the best for you guys. <laughs> so we're going to refilm it today, and I think this location is going to work out so much better than the last one too. So I'm really stoked for this. And judging off the footage from the last one, there is a lot to talk about. It was about 45 to an hour worth of footage, so we're going to try to uh, streamline a little more today. So let's just jump into it. Let's not waste any more time, and let's look at this beautiful truck and meet the man who drives it. Let's go ahead and meet the man himself, Mr. Cole Jensen, one of my great friends. So Cole, why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself, talk about the truck a little bit, like its history maybe, how you came to obtaining it, and we'll get into the build. Okay, so, uh, so I actually found this truck just bone stock grandpa truck on Facebook marketplace in San Diego. I got a hell of a deal on it and the the cards were right for me to build it. So I just decided to do it. I guess the best way to go about it is just any other build go front to rear bumper. So let's get, let's start with the bumper you have here. I see that it's got the KDM stamp on it. And I know you had the whole truck built by Gary over at KDM. Yeah. So is this bumper something that he kind of already has like on file or was it like a custom one-off? It's, it's a straight custom, uh, from scratch bumper. Um, he always wanted to do another bumper um, with the box uh, plated frame horns. And so I just, and I wanted a push bar and I just kind of like let him do what he wanted to do with it. And then uh, this was the final product and it ended up turning out to be like one of the favorite bumpers he's ever built actually. So you said he wanted to do something with the box horns. You want to show us those real fast? Yeah, these are the frame horns right here that come right off of the, the frame of the truck. And these are boxed versus most people will do just a plate right over it and cap it and then do like a tube. Mm -hmm. So these are way stronger, way beefier. Yeah, no, it's definitely a beautiful bumper. It's honestly one of my favorites that I've seen. It's like a very simple design. Right. But I don't know. It just looks good. Yeah. Like, like it's a simple design. It hugs the body pretty good. Yeah. Like it's not coming off too far. Right. It looks durable with these, with the box horns versus the tube. Right. And I see up here, you have the new GG lights on. You want to talk about these a little bit since you're like an ambassador for them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So these are actually the new uh, GG racer series pods. Um, they're actually just about the same size as the amber sport pods um just with a, a more full um lens and they have um upgraded internals in them um they they are bright for sure and these look slick too they look pretty nice whatever the coating is they have on it it's kind of different than most lights i've seen you know right and you had other gg lights on here before but these just came out and you just threw them on yeah i had their old previous sport pods okay on there you like them? Are they bright? Oh yeah, they're real bright. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> they're I'm gonna, double the output per light. There's that video you put on your Instagram of you blinding your neighbors across the park. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well since we're already talking about lights, you wanna move over to these pillar lights you have? Yeah, so these are also GG lighting, uh, five inch day makers with the uh, yellow amber lenses with their GG um, hood um, pillar brackets. Yeah, these look good too. One of the things I like about these is like, I don't know if it's just because it's a full size, but those things are massive. Those lights are massive, but they don't look massive in comparison to the truck. Like while on the truck, they look very subtle. You don't really like notice them, like not, right. in, a, not in a bad way, but like, you right. know, like they're, they're, they blend in well. Yes. They blend in well, but they're also huge. Like I got big hands and these are, they're pretty, they're pretty big lights. Yeah, they're, pretty, they're pretty good size. More than enough light, that's for sure. Now, as I already know, but obviously they don't know, you have a Bluetooth switch that controls all your lights that sits inside your cab, right? Yeah, so I, it's a uh, trigger six shooter system by trigger controller. And uh, what it is, is like, it's basically like the same principle as like a Switch Pro that mounts in your engine bay and then you harness it all up to one unit. But except there's no wire that you have to run through the firewall for your switches. It comes with this nice little um, switch system with little like, I call them puck batteries. Yeah. Like, 
you know, super simple. Um, and, and I can control all the lights wirelessly. Yeah, that's pretty badass. So it's not like you're you're not committing to one spot. You can literally put it anywhere in the truck that you want, right? And just keep moving it around all the time. Yeah, yeah. And and trigger does. I haven't looked in it for my truck, but they do have like um, mounting um, accessories for most vehicles out there now. So that's pretty sick. Okay, uh, we saw the whips turn on in the back, but we'll go over those once we move to the back. For now, you want to move, uh, what about these fenders? What fenders do you have on the truck and kind of the, the specs of them? So these are ADV's front um, front fenders, four and a half inch over wide. Um, and then the rear bedsides are also four and a half um, bulge, um, also ADV. Um, yeah. Do you know how the fitment went as far as installing? So, <laughs> okay. I don't... I already know where this is going <laughs> with ADV. <laughs> okay, maybe we just, maybe we let that speak for itself. That, maybe, yeah. That's so, yeah, because yeah, we did, we did Geons and... Yeah. So, uh, anyways, you want to pop, pop the hood? I know you got some stuff under there to show us. <laughs> A little dusty in here. So the first thing I want to talk about, since it's the most prominent, especially with opening right now, right. is the support i don't know what you call it the sub the hydraulic support system that props right. the hood open you know right. it's not the traditional like stick like i got right. going on yeah and you said these were custom made or custom installed not yeah. custom made so but. um because i guess we gotta gotta hop into the inner fenders um these are dirt king's new um inner fenders for um 99 to 06 silverados okay and so when switching to these, they don't have like a bracket for the factory hinge. So what Gary did was is that he found these little air struts at, at uh, McFaddendale and then he kind of just uh, rigged up his own little hinge system. And so now it just floats on its own. So that's pretty cool. But stock, is it like a stick kind of prop up system or is it also hydraulics? It has like those old school, like, like circular twisted, like leaf sprung oh, hinge yeah know? yeah I so get it's like you. A, it's still like a self-propping type hinge this is just a more modern yeah version of it yeah well that's cool that you can still utilize that right so um i guess let's start over here with the trigger system since we just finished talking about that yeah yeah so this is the control module and then um all of this was done by gg and they kind of piggybacked off of the wiring from the fuse box that gary did and they made it really nice and, and tidy in here. Yeah, all this looks really clean, actually. As far as wiring goes, I mean, you don't have a rat's nest mess of wires. Right. Yeah. All right, what else you got going on in the engine bay? Yeah, so it's just a it's a stock 5.3, um, just with the Spectre intake, um, because I, I had to do the intake because of the inner fenders, because there's no factory mounting anymore. Um, and then um stock trans well throw it in there um you know ticking time bomb for l60 um and then um we got castle manufacturing's custom um fuse box relocation um and also um computer relocation here in the fender well um actually you could see that from here can't you yeah, i remember looking at it the last yeah, time we right filmed there. it oh yeah that's nice yeah that's tucked up in there pretty nice um, and then Gary went ahead and did a, uh, a 2500 hydro boost conversion on the on the brake booster. So we took out the factory one and put in a 2500 unit. Um, a lot more uh, uh, stopping power. Yeah. yeah, and that's always nice to have in the in the desert when <laughs> yeah. you're rolling on dirt. You oh, know, yeah, like you, your stopping distance is actually a lot longer. But oh, yeah. all right, so what do we got going right here? So this, this is a uh, custom um, aluminum TIG welded coolant expansion tank that Gary actually made by hand. He designed it and TIG welded it himself. Yeah, so I mean, you've heard the name Gary thrown around a lot while we're in this engine bay. And like I said, KDM. So Gary is the owner slash founder slash operator of KDM Fabrication yeah. over in Anaheim. And he's just a great, fantastic guy just down to the core. Yeah, and on top of that, one of the most talented and meticulous i'd say as an umbrella term truck builders you know in our area oh yeah he worked on my truck because cole referred him and spoke so highly of him so 
as you can hear from all these explanations, you know, just down to the small nitty gritty details on certain things on that side of the engine bay and custom making his own parts where he sees they need to be made. Just a great guy, great company all around. Big shout out to KDM. Yeah, shout out to you, Gary. <laughs> we'll yes. say he's the he's the sponsor for this video and he wants his message to be to follow Desert Dime, subscribe to Desert Dime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gary. All right. Is there anything else in the engine bay other than what's going to be leading into the next topic? Mm, I don't think so. I think that's that's pretty much the gist of it. All right. So then let's go ahead and talk about the last thing in the engine bay, which is going to be the engine crossover yes, support. The yeah. engine crossover support made by KDM. KDM. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and talk about it. So uh, this is just uh, Gary's uh, engine support beam um, that he puts on pretty much all of his trucks now. Um, after he actually did this one on mine where he added these, um, these I guess you could call them gussets, um, they, um, he started doing that mandatory now on, on all of his race kit installs. Um, which kind of follows into what we're gonna talk about right now. Perfect, so let's get just the top shot while we have the engine open. So it goes down right into the top of where all the suspension's yeah, mounting it up. it lands right on top of the, the shock towers. And can you unbolt that from anywhere right here to yes. get in? Yes, oh, so yeah, right it is there. fully removable, so if you have to do any motor work, it you can have free access. Perfect, and that's some nice hardware there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, that ties in perfectly with the suspension down here. So as you can see, it comes through the top and mounts in. So you want to go ahead and talk about this whole, it looks like a custom-made sort of mounting system for everything. Right, yeah, so this is a Missoula off-road race kit and uh, it comes with uh, full brand new uh, shock towers, um, obviously uppers and lowers and, and um, spindles. Um, it had, the, the shock tower um, has, is incorporated for a 2.0 by 2.0 bump stop in the top, bumps right off the top of the spindle. Um, and then this, ac this actual um, uh, shock tower, um, tube is uh, actually made by Gary. Yeah, I was going to ask, is any mounting point in here OEM or was it all... No, yeah, so... It was the, all redone. Yeah, the Missoula kit, when the towers actually, if you see, um, the, the uprights are actually incorporated to the tower now. So like your factory pivots would be down here lower, but you obviously chop those off and when you put the towers on, um, it's it'll, it'll bring the mounting points up more so that way you don't have... Um, any improper uh, geometry on the upper arm. Mm -hmm. um, it's got dual straps um, on the front. Um, there, you get the straps. Right there. I see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then like I said, um, Gary made this um, this tube to mount the like the reservoirs and a little bit extra strength. Um, and then the, the whole front of the frame is overlay plated. Um, by Gary at KDM um, just for added um, frame rigidity. Okay, I heard you talk about the specs for the bump stop. I might have missed it. I might have zoned out. No, you're <laughs> but good. did you talk about the shock specs yet? No, I didn't talk about the shock specs yet. Perfect. That's what we're that's what we're all here for, man. That's what <laughs> does the work. I know, I know. <laughs> um, so it's a, a two and a half by ten inch pre runner series king coilover. Um, and that's pretty much it for the shocks up here. Um, they, I had them custom valved by uh, dialed shock prep, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin, and uh, I had them valved for uh, for no bypass, and I daily it too because this is my daily. So I told them I, I daily it. I wanted to perform out in the desert, but I'm gonna run no bypass for now, and it's worked very well. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, do you know anything about the spring rate, like the? The yes. Yeah. Do you know what that is? Yeah. So the the spring rates, um, it's a four inch, um, five hundred pound um, preload spring, and then the primary spring is a seven hundred pound eighteen inch spring. All right. Perfect. I feel like there's just gonna be one person that asks about that in the comments and be yeah. like, dude, I don't know. Go oh, ask yeah. him. I get, I get a lot of Chevy guys that hit me up like, what spring rates are you running? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know my spring rates, and I got people asking, but. Uh, one last thing I wanted to look at, just because th these aren't the stock tie rods. So it oh, comes yeah. with the kit, the Missoula kit. Yeah. Are these their tie rods? Yeah, these are their aftermarket tie rods and their billet um, inner clevis for the rack. Okay. Yeah, that's all. 
beautiful in here, dude. The, all the colors, everything is so clean and shiny. Let's get some shots of this before we move on next. Is there anything else about the suspension you want to talk about? Mm, not really up front. That's pretty much um, all it's got right now. Other than this nice um, dimple dyed bracket that Gary made off the tube for my uh, a stiff bracket for the for the intake so it's not flopping around. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm telling you, attention to detail, Gary's on it. Right? Yeah, I really like this whole this whole tower that he makes go around and tie in with the shock tower that right. holds on the bump stop. That's pretty sick. There's actually one more thing um, that I forgot to mention on the front is that um, Gary actually did an inner firewall trim chop job on this to fully clear the 37s at full bump and full turn. Um, and then if you see on that on the driver's side, he actually um, incorporated the uh, the factory e-brake cable so that way I didn't have to lose my parking brake. That's pretty cool. Nice and clean. Let's just get a little track with shot real fast. Yeah, dude, that kit's gorgeous. All the silver and black. All right, well, now that we're done with the suspension in the front, let's talk about these wheels and tires that are that are just prominently poking out right here. <laughs> so these are actually um, a newer wheel, I believe, by Raceline. Um, they're called the Aero HDs. Um, they're a 17 by nine inch wide wheel, I believe. Either eight and a half or nine. Yeah. The tires, those are Kanadi Mudhog MTs. Um, they're a little bit smaller of a tire company. They're made in Indonesia, um, but I've heard really great things about these tires that other people have ran and and uh, I haven't had a problem with them since and I actually really like the brand now since I've yeah. had them. Let me get some shots of the specs on these just so people don't ask. Get it right there. Beautiful. Kanadi oh, yeah. Mudhog MTs. All right, well, I think that's it for the front end, right? You want to move to the back? Sure. Well, since we're already on this side and the bed side's off making it easier to see, do you want to talk about your exhaust? Because I see it poking out right here. Right. So um, it's just a, a pretty simple exhaust job. I didn't want to go like too baller on it. Um, so it's just a, from the wipe where the wipe pipe meets um, together, it's just a straight three inch all the way back. And then with a, uh, with a three inch uh, by six inch uh, Black Widow neighbor hater. The neighbor hater, oh no. And it's just dumped out the side. Yeah. Kind of, almost. It doesn't come out the fender, but it's like dumped. Yeah, I call it a sneaky dump. A sneaky dump. All right, well, since we're already here and it's kind of right in our face with the bedside off, you want to talk about the leafs and the shackles and hangers you got going on here? Yeah, so these are Deaver U182 Oversprings. And then with Blitzkrieg um, Motorsports shackles and hangers front and rear, they're actually one of the only companies that makes a front hanger for these trucks, which is really nice because a lot of people say that once you add a, a Deaver and then a rear shackle and hanger and your spring's got all that articulation and, and movement, that the stock hanger in the front will tend to like oblong hole hmm. the, the, for the bolt. So that'll keep it in check. That's good, yeah. And these are beefy too. Yeah, they were also the ones that made the biggest shackle I could find. Too. <laughs> it's like a, I think it's like a like a seven or eight inch shackle. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like some people are gonna question or think to themselves with a build this elaborate and cool and crazy, why are you still doing a spring over? So I my intention was to go spring under with it, but. Um, there were just some things that I didn't want to have to do, um, which includes you have to chop the, the top leaf spring perches off and then make new ones on the bottom so that way the, the leaf spring can properly sit on the axle. And then um, typically you don't have to, but Gary likes to do a, a truss on the top of the axle to keep it braced so you don't bend it. Um, so I didn't want to have to go through all that. and. Uh, I don't really beat on the truck that hard. Like for as built as it is, I wanted something that was overly built to go through whatever I'm gonna go through because then I know that it, the truck's gonna be fine because it's meant for far worse. Yeah. So it's more so like a snowball effect for one simple, you know, simple modification, you know? Yeah. Like if you're just switching from over to under, then you gotta do a whole new list of things essentially right. is why you yeah. opted not to. And I mean, like you said, you're not 
this isn't purely a desert truck. You're not right. using it just for off-roading. Right. If you had, I'm sure you would have gone spring under or maybe even link it. But right. for being a daily driver as well, it's just made more sense. Yeah, Gary and I went through all the different options because we already had the front settled. And then, you know, we, we worked our way to the back once we were done with that. So that way we could really put focus on it. And uh, it just seemed to be the best route for me at the time. And also you keep a lot of good right height in the back. So just in case I wanted to pull like my jet boat or something like that, it wouldn't sag down too low. Yeah. So there's right. a lot of factors. All right, cool. We'll tuck back under in a little bit, but since we're already talking about the suspension aspect, you want to go ahead and talk about the shock specs? Yeah, so these are King 3.0 by 16 3.2 bypasses. Um, they're actually, um, when I bought them, the box said that they were for a leaf spring spec truck, so it was perfect. <laughs> Something I just noticed right now as I was filming is the mounting point for this is on top of the leaves. You're right. <laughs> Actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Those are uh, Dirt King um, lower shock mounts because um, if you see, they're kind of um, offset outwards. Yeah. Um, that's because some, um, depending on your tube layout, this tube was barely grazing the frame right here at full droop. So this actually kicks the shock out a little bit outwards more, so that mm -hmm. way it can clear the frame rail. Well, as you and all of you know, this is purely, not purely, but mainly like a Tacoma channel. So what what is that mounting point due to? Is it because it's a full size? Is it a Chevy thing? Is it just the build you did? Like, is that, that's not the, is that the original mounting point for the lower end of a shock on this truck or no? No, no. So, so it usually has like- Typically they would be, um, it, it's like the older style way how they used to mount shocks like one they, they would mount typically at the bottom of the axle Yeah, and they would the one the, the the driver one would kick out backwards and then the the driver one would be like the passenger forwards. one would go forward Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of like how my truck used to be before I did my shock relocation right. So what did this get moved for did it get moved for the entire full cage build with bypass? Can you move it with just a normal like OEM replacement shock setup or no? Yeah, so it was we cut them off because um, there's no real way to mount a big bypass like this. Um, the, the typical way to mount one on a full size. Um, mo I mean, I think most of the time on a, on. Well, actually, your relocation kit is on the axle still. Yeah, um, so that's what I'm wondering. Like what yeah. what warrants this to be done? I mean, well, like you said, the the tubes aren't gonna fit if you go back to the axle because it's on the right. is that on the inside of yeah. the leaf it usually goes? Yeah, yeah, it would be underneath the truck. Um, actually, oh you yeah, because you're going actually, up past you can the frame. Actually, see the factory top mount. Right oh yeah, there. I see it. So, would you have been able to if you're doing a custom cage? Could you stay on the inside of the axle and cut deeper into the bed? Um, you don't want to because then your your shock positioning would be too narrow. Yeah, so you're not really the shock isn't gonna be able to do what it really needs to do mm -hmm. um, so um, The next best option is to Most of the time I mean for years people have been doing it like this where they get like a like a lower shock mount And then they they bend the ends so that way it it, um, it bolts down from the um, the u-bolts. Yeah um, the best way possible though would to be bringing out further, but we can't do that since I don't have an aftermarket widened rear end. That yeah, you can't that you can't mount it on the on the actual top of the axle itself because there's no room for it. Um, so if if I had like a cambered rear housing or something where it was wider stance mm -hmm. in the back, then we could have brought the sh the bed cage and the shock mounts out more, so that way it's on the outside of the axle. That's a very just. <laughs> That was a very interesting rabbit hole we just went down. Like I noticed it and I was like, hold like my brain just started going like, okay. I know, yeah. I think it's cool though. Like it's, it's, it adds to the character of the truck. It's, it's truly unique. Cause like you said, right. if it's a fully built, like desert committed truck, you are going to have the wider axle so you can mount it different. Right. And there are mounting points on the other side. So it's like you, it, it shows the attention to detail, how, right how far in advance you have to think about the build and think, yeah. okay, what's it used for? What are our options? What way should we go? So right. I think I, I think it's pretty cool we just noticed that. Didn't even notice it the first time around we did it. <laughs> what about this? Did this get welded on by Gary? So yeah, this is uh, this is actually the, the front um, support for the bed cage. So this is oh. the front tube. 
Yeah. You want to wrap around to the other side? I'll yeah. stay over here and yeah. talk about the bed cage if you have any stories or tidbits about that. Yeah, no worries. Because it's a nice, it's like almost like a spider web honeycomb design back here with the cage. Right. Um, yeah, so this is actually um, Gary's uh, KDM Fab's bed cage as well. Um, he does his a little bit differently, especially if you're going to go spring over because a lot of problems with spring over Chevys um, in general is you can't get enough up travel out of them. And so what he does is that um, instead of making the whole bed um, cage and the shock mounts flush with the bed line, he does this nice little kick up. So that way it brings the location of the shock up. Cause since like we said before that the, the shocks are mounted on top of the leaf pack, there's not a lot of up travel room like, yeah. shaft wise. So he brings this up and then we also ran the, the Blitzkrieg shackles and hangers because they're the only um, shackle setup that actually gives you another inch of ride height mm -hmm. when most of the other companies aren't giving you any extra ride height. A lot of people don't like that, but if you're doing spring over, you should because you, you, there's no other way around the up travel. Yeah. So this whole thing's almost like a puzzle. Like you have to get certain companies products working together to right. make yeah. it all cycle properly with right. the most performance you're asking out of it and all right. that. That's pretty cool. All right. So I see back here, you also have a secondary battery or is this the primary? This is the primary battery. So since we don't have the factory inner fenders anymore for the, for the factory um, battery tray, um, I had to relocate it. So Gary got me a, um, this tray from McKenzie's off-road um, in Anaheim off of uh, Orangethorpe. And then we also picked up an Optima Yellow Top. Um, and then he had his friend Elliot come in and he's the one that actually uh, redid all the wiring from the fuse box and like the, the computer of the truck. Yeah. So now everything is like factory spec, but just ran all the way to the bed. I'm gonna come over there and check out the wiring because like if this is your primary and you said they had to rewire it and everything, right. I want to see how it ties in all the way back to the front of the truck. So you got the wires going on the top, the sheathing, and is this a hole that had to be, hold on. Yeah, they, they drilled that little hole yeah. right there. Yeah, so that hole had to be drilled. It's not something OEM like a bolt was going through. Let's see here. Where is it? It's, oh, I, I kind of see it straight yeah, back it comes, there. You right can see like here. the sunlight coming through. And then it comes along the, the frame rail all the way to the front. How's it held in on the frame rail? Is it on a bracket or is it zip tied? Um, it's all like zip tied in on like uh, factory lines that are already down there. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't even look like that it's moved. That's pretty cool to be able to relocate the whole primary. I mean, I get like secondary batteries going in, but to right. redo the primary and have all the wiring neatly tied up like that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, he did a really good job. All right, well, while we're back here, I see you got a chase light and the two whips. Uh, you want to talk about those real fast? Yeah, so the chase light is actually just one of Gigi's um, sport pods. So that's actually what I used to have on the front of my bumper. But that's just what I use as my chase light. And then these are also Gigi's five foot LED RGB whips. Um, and this is all tied to your switch that you have, the Bluetooth switch. Right, yeah. And then I actually I had a dome light from an old razor that I had. And I actually had Gary incorporate a plate, as you see in the middle there. Oh, damn. And, uh, and I actually use it as like a, like a bed light. That's actually pretty sick. Out of... However long I've known you and this truck, I've never noticed that before. Oh, that's really? kind of crazy, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because I actually have a shell, as you know, for this. Yeah, and, I haven't uh, seen that in a while. More for the daily season. And I was just thinking, I'm like, well, yeah, you can see plenty with the whips, but what if I have the shell on and I can't put the whips on and I need to get in there and like load stuff into the bed? Yeah. I just thought that that would be a cool little feature. Uh, it definitely is. Have yeah. you ran any other company's whips besides these? I have. I, I just once, it was a set of 5150 whips. Cause I remember we were at that Taco Tuesday meet like a few months ago and you oh. and Emmett were chopping it up about whips in right. different companies, right? Yeah. So have you, cause he was having problem with the 5150s. 
Yeah, right? he, he said his was cracking. Yeah, have you ever had any problems with these? No, I haven't. And I mean, you've seen that I actually drive with these on like a lot of the time. It's and... almost like your your daytime running lights. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. how often I mean, these are on. Whenever we go to the truck meets at night and like you know want to be flashy, I just throw them on. But I drive them like on the freeway, like going eighty. I've, we've been out to the to the dirt quite a few times already with a lot of bucking back and forth. Yeah, and uh, they they and they always look straight too. They don't ever have any like curve to them like, yeah. from being bent. They backwards. look thick. Like, yeah, they these look thick. like thick whips. Yeah, they they say on the GG website that they use um, thicker material than most whip mm -hmm. companies. All right, let's wrap up the bed back here with your dual spare setup. Um, I wouldn't imagine that you have... Oh, can you flip the tailgate down? Let's see that. Oh, yeah. Um, not to call you out, but I think it's just a point to be made. That's the chase light that we just talked about. I know, I know. It's like... It's... Uh... Oh, my God. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of blocked right yeah. now. It was like these... The spare setup was added after the whole cage and lights and everything were yeah. done. So yeah. I get that, get but call for that. it's, I mean, you have the whips. You have that's the whips. That's why I say all the time, I'm like, they're going to see that. Yeah. So again, with the spare setup, uh, obviously it's not a matching set because you just got the new wheels right. and these tires are used used as well. You said oh, you just got them for- also used as well. Yeah. You said you just got these for like a good deal off like offer up yeah. or something. Yeah. I got the methods for like 200 bucks, like- on on offer up and then mm -hmm. i found these 237s with like 50 percent tread left for like 100 bucks yeah you mind if i climb in your bed go ahead i want to check out this strap setup now so this strap setup is the one i'm trying to switch to the dirt king one right so right now i have the end fab but this dirt king one looks a lot sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna steal i'm gonna steal this product i'll talk about this product go ahead I don't know a lot about it, but like the ones I'm running right now is an NFAB and I hate the bracket system because they're huge, like huge blocks that are just fixed in position. And whenever I don't run my spare and I want to put something in the bed, I like ram into those mounts because right. they're just protruding. Yeah, yeah. And the reason I want to switch to these Dirt King ones is because their mounts are like those D rings that if you're not using will lay flat. Right. Which is nice. And all of their brackets, mine kind of hook in. These ones are like a quick release system almost. Right which is really nice. So this is why I want to switch to the Dirt King strap setup. It's the same idea, you know, it's like two mounting points with one strap that comes and ratchets in. And it just looks, it looks cleaner than what I'm running right now. Right. And you haven't had any problems with it, right? Cause you're holding obviously a lot more weight, a taller stack and everything. Right, yeah, I, I haven't am. had any problems with the, with the strap. Uh, the only thing that I could say that happened was that um, when, when Gary and I installed it, um, we noticed that some of the hardware was kind of wrong, like it wasn't big enough. Hmm. Um, and I, I honestly can't remember exactly what the case was, but if you guys do get this spare tire, it's a great spare tire setup. Um, just make sure that the hardware is good because... So all these nuts and bolts holding in the mounts are aftermarket, yeah. some that you guys went and picked up? Uh, Gary actually just had them laying around. Okay. Um, so he had he had good hardware laying around and we swapped it out with those. It was just really weird because once it would start getting to that tightening point, it felt like it, it wasn't tightening anymore, but none of the hardware was stripped. It was just a, it was a complete anomaly. We don't know what, what it was. All right. Oh, rear bumper. We're already yeah, back yeah. here. You want to talk about this bad yeah, boy? Yeah, this is actually another Dirt King product. So this is Dirt King, uh, Dirt King's rear bumper and their low profile hitch receiver oh, that's to match cool. with it. That's nice. So it matches up like it's not that way. You don't have this ugly tow hitch hanging down here. Yeah, or something to scrape. Right. And then they also incorporate this nice plate right here to do the factory trailer brake connector and they also only bumper on the market that comes with license plate lights that's really big i can't tell you how many other trucks that i bought like back in the day they were like you know pre-runners and they have like a custom rear bumper on there but then you don't have any rear license plate lights and then you get pulled over yeah <laughs> you know and there's one more thing i noticed while we were over here since the bed's off that I notice all the time, it's just a back of the mind kind of thought, but you do have rock lights inside all the wheel wells to kind of illuminate it, light it up, yeah, help you look in there at night. And two, it just, I mean, it looks cool. You yeah. look like a spaceship yeah, <laughs> with all your whips and your rock lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so these are actually another GG product. These are their new RGB rock lights so that you can change them whatever color you want from app on your phone. Um, and then these 
these mounts are actually custom made by Gary because um, we had nowhere to really put them. And then he said, I could I could whip something up custom. And, yeah. and then he made these little L brackets and then he nut inserted um, the top portion. So that way all you have to do is put the nut from the back side, and then you don't have to hold a nut on the other side. So these are just inserted to the back of these mounts. Okay. Um, and then, you know, typical rock light hardware right here. Yeah. And then the, the front inner fenders are actually nut inserted just like that as well. Mm -hmm. straight into the to the fender so that way it's nice solid mounting point and then we also thought too like it, just in case down the road if we decided to do like the dk um tub inner fenders mm -hmm. the bigger ones that this wouldn't interfere with like that the cut work okay yeah that's attention to detail like i said damn and sorry, I just keep like noticing things while you're talking. No, you're good. I see the straps in the back. Yes. Yeah, Do you know what strapped. you're strapped at for the rear um, and the front, I guess? So the front, Missoula claims 18 inches of travel for that kit. Okay. And then this setup in the back, I, I'd i say we have a good solid 17 okay. in the back. That's not bad, especially for bringing spring over. Right. All right, cool. Yeah, sorry about that, but... <laughs> I saw the straps and I was like, oh. I know you're good. And I'm just trying to think of like every possible thing that somebody who's looking to build their truck like yours mm. could think about to ask. Uh, as far as these bed supports, are these custom made by Gary or did you buy these through somebody? Yeah, the, uh, these are just brackets that Gary throws together whenever he does a uh, like a bedside install. Okay. Oh, um, one couple other little things that we skipped over. Um, the truck also has a R1 Concepts uh, drilled and slotted uh, rotor brake kit front nice. and back <laughs> and then uh, with with their ceramic pads and then the back has a set of bora wheel spacers mm. um, I see them poking through just a to give bit. it a little bit more filled out um in the back with the fiberglass and also kind of like how i think like with your relocation setup i think also if i wasn't running that spacer i might be like yeah know, that's coming true. into contact with these bypasses so it's not just for looks. Not just for looks. <laughs> Functionality. Oh, and then here, um, these are actually some brackets that Gary makes for uh, Chevy trucks. Um, it's a really good part because um, there's no other bracket for it in the market right now. And a big time with these, especially with cat eye trucks um, or just any 99 to 06 truck from Chevy, um, a lot of people, even though they have this bracket right here, they end up having like a stress crack, like kind of by the tail light. On the glass? Yeah. Okay. So this is actually nice because he incorporated it with the hardware that bolts your tailgate in. Oh. So you literally just pop down the tailgate and then you would like undo these these bolts right here. And then and then you slide that puppy in there and then and it bolts right up factory hardware and it just gives your bedside a little bit more strength. Attention to detail. <laughs> <laughs> and Gary makes those for anybody. If you like, if, even if your truck isn't built by him, and you're building your truck yourself, and you want like bedside supports right here, he sells these um, as a pair to anybody that wants them. Nice. Yeah. Now that we've talked about the cage, and I pointed out that front horn kind of coming through the bed, it's made me appreciate like the durability of this cage, like the way it's tied into the frame and welded in, versus right. like. Especially with like our trucks and the composite beds and everything, I see a lot of just bolt in right. that bolt right into the composite bed and don't right. go all the way through to the frame right. welded on. So that that looks very durable. Yeah. <laughs> looks like the whole truck's tied together, right? Like stiffened. Yeah. Well, man, that's that's bumper to bumper right there, bed and everything. I don't know if we, I don't think we missed anything. There's nothing done to the interior really, other than you have no. a backup camera just that's a very wired clean, up and maintained truck. Everything stock inside that truck. Well, man, I oh, mean, gears. We didn't do gears. You're regeared. Yeah, I'm regeared. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh God. The, one, the one that got oh, away. God. <laughs> so the the rear. Um, I don't know what brand gears I'm running. To be honest, I know that sounds stupid, but I just wasn't really paying attention to that. I just asked Gary like how much they would do it for, and he gave me a price. I really liked it, so I just I just went to them. But it's a uh, 488 gears with a uh, Detroit True Track uh, auto locker, so it's like a aggressive posi track, you know. Okay. 
So there's no like switch or air compressed um, locker in it. It's just a self-engaging unit. Tedious question, do you know your MPG with this whole build? I do. Um, my average is like 15. Oh my God, you get better MPG than I do. <laughs> you're a full-size V8, long travel, and you're getting better MPG than me? That's it, this interview's over. This interview's over. <laughs> All right, man. Well, no, seriously, I think we've hit everything from front to back. Um, I've just been going over in my head what else we could be missing, but I think that truly is it. It is a beautiful truck. Very, very good dynamic duo, you and Gary, with the attention to detail and how meticulous you were with this build. I think everything works together perfectly, all the way down to the different brands working in harmony to make the geometry and all getting every last drip of performance out of it that you can. Right. So hats off to you guys. Congratulations. It's a beautiful truck. <laughs> Thank but you. If they made it this far, I think they deserve to know that it's being sold sometime soon, so. Yeah, it is being sold. It's, uh, it's just, it's nothing against the truck. I, I love the truck, but I mean, as everybody knows right now, we're in some 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 dark times right now. and <laughs> Economically, yeah, not econ not you emotionally, yeah. but. Yeah, no, not me, I'm fine. <laughs> it's, it's the world that's got problems. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's just, it's just one of those things. It's like uh, the truck is still very mint, like from where I built it, so. I want to be able to cash out on it for what it's really worth, but not for some clapped out yeah. build, you know? Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to get a different setup. I don't, whether who knows what it may be, but we're, we're not going to go empty handed. That's for sure. Well, with that being said, um, again, if he does end up selling it, we're going to try to stay in contact with whoever buys it. And maybe we can get a video of it out in the desert running and seeing what the truck truly can do. Um, but again, he's not going to be running it right now because he wants to sell it. So uh, I think that's it for the video. Sorry it was a little bit longer, but like we saw, there's a lot going on here. A lot of attention to detail, and it's just a beautiful truck. So I'm going to go grab some cinematics of it right now. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching another video. And make sure you stay tuned for the next one coming out because I'm filming that tomorrow in the desert. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you, Cole, for showing us the truck. Of course, thanks, thanks for the video opportunity. Oh, you know how I feel about this. <laughs> and thank you to Gary for, for such a beautiful build and all the work you put into it. And with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next one.